Good afternoon. Today on the Angry Astronaut. Uh, it appears that Launcher One has suffered an anomaly, which will prevent us from making orbit for this mission. Uh, we are looking at the information and data that we have uh, gotten, um, and we'll be back with you in a moment with more. The saddest of news has come. The news that we've been all fearing for a, uh, a while now. And uh, here it is. What are we going to do? Virgin Orbit has collapsed. Virgin Orbit is hacked to bits in bankruptcy court, ending the history of the company permanently. That'll teach them for developing an innovative system that reached orbit four times. And all of this happening in the same week that NASA awarded a multi-billion dollar contract and the future of us establishing a permanent presence on the moon to a company that has never reached orbit in its 20 year history. How did all of this happen? And what does this mean for the future of other emerging launch providers? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I actually haven't intended to be pouring out these bulletins day after day recently, but there's been so much happening this week, it's kind of difficult to not cover it. So after receiving over 30 bids, it appears that nobody was interested in purchasing, at least in total, a company that had successfully reached orbit four times after only having a single failure during its initial development phase and then one anomaly after the four successful tries. If we had that kind of attitude back in the time when SpaceX was getting going, well, that company would have been out of business a long time ago. So how did all of this come about? Why did Virgin Orbit get left to the dogs to be hacked up in bankruptcy court? And who are the investors? Who are the people that did decide that at least some of Virgin Orbit's tech technology was worth scavenging. Well, when it comes right down to it, the companies that did invest in Virgin Orbit's technology were companies that didn't even really crucially need this technology, whereas organizations that desperately needed some sort of reliable launch provider that had an established history of reaching orbit, they weren't willing to invest a penny. All right, guys, as of this moment, approximately 20 minutes before touchdown, uh, beyond exciting at the moment. This is the culmination of a couple of years of waiting for all of these people and indeed myself as well. So I uh, can't wait for this to happen and all of you will be seeing it very soon. It's difficult to believe that so many horrible things could happen in such a short period of time, but indeed they have. While I waited for Cosmic Girl on that fateful night in Cornwall, I was very optimistic about the future, but at the same time, I was also a bit anxious. I was well aware of Virgin Orbit's financial state and realized that if there was an anomaly on this particular mission, the future of the company would be in dire straits. And I reported this fact a number of times while we were waiting for the launch to transpire. However, I never expected that things would fall apart this quickly. The swift demise of Virgin Orbit was greeted with disbelief and outrage from a number of employees, including the COO, and he sent the following email to employees before he departed, quote, Dear Virgin Orbit and Virgin Orbit National Systems current and former employees, like many of you, today is my last day at Virgin Orbit. The last 26 months I have spent as your COO have a lot of positives for me, including learning how we build our rocket it, working with a multi-talented team to do so, successfully launching three rockets and delivering our customers into orbit, making new friends and colleagues, and experiencing a challenging and team-building Spaceport Cornwall first launch campaign, to name a few. Thank you for everything you gave to me personally and to the dream of Virgin Orbit. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. That said, we are at a crossroads, and I wanted to say you deserved better than this. 
this. I don't say this lightly, as I know the current situation is emotionally, mentally, and financially challenging for many of us. You have been part of something audacious, challenging, and fulfilling. You created an entirely new air launch system that has a unique, responsive, anywhere, anytime, unwarned capability that there is definitely a market for and demonstrated it worked for almost five times. You simply did not have the leadership or opportunity to demonstrate to the world what you can fully do and how this product could be an enduring force in the market. I want to say something to you that you have not heard from the person that should be saying it, so I will. I'm sorry and I apologize. I'm sorry that I was not able to help us avoid this outcome. I'm sorry we didn't act sooner and avoid surprising and so many of our supporters and customers with this abrupt finale. I'm sorry that we didn't prioritize our people and financial resources better. I'm sorry that you have to bear the burden of being out of a job, one that I know many of you loved and that fed you both literally and figuratively. And for me, I'm sorry that I was not able to convince our leader and board to take a different path to give us more time to figure things out. I'm sorry and I apologize, plain and simple, you deserved better. After all that, I think it should be obvious to all of us that Virgin Orbit really did have potential and that a new owner could have exploited that potential because they wouldn't have been stuck with all of Virgin Orbit's financial obligations after going through the bankruptcy courts. They could have snapped up this launch provider for a mere 50 or 60 million dollars. We're talking one and a half percent of the contract value that Blue Origin just received. One and a half percent of that contract value, which by the way only covers the Artemis 5 mission for an entire launch provider. I am left in a state of utter disbelief because here's a short list of countries who are waiting for horizontal launch to come to one of their airports furnished by Virgin Orbit that are now frankly shit out of luck. Brazil, Japan, Australia, and not only them, other prospective countries who could have taken advantage of the mobility of the Virgin Orbit solution, nations that have a flourishing satellite industry that could have taken advantage of a launch provider who operated out of their own countries rather than having to invest in the expense and also the considerable carbon footprint involved in sending not only their payloads but all of the technicians necessary to deliver and integrate these payloads. And not only that, Virgin Orbit had a number of established customers who were looking forward to future launches with this provider, the most significant of which is Poland's SatRev company, who signed a new three-year agreement the month after Virgin Orbit experienced its anomaly in Cornwall. And not only that, Virgin Orbit also established binding agreements with other companies like Spire Global, the Luxembourg Ministry of Defense, who were looking for for a reflexive and reactive capability to quickly deploy military satellites in the event that a satellite should be shot down in some future conflict. This rapid reactive capability is most easily delivered by a horizontal launch provider and the only horizontal launch provider that currently has an established record of reaching orbit is Virgin Orbit. Well, not any longer, of course. So who decided to invest in this company's technology, given the fact that nobody seemed to be interested in taking care of all of these customers in the future? Well, the buyers that chopped up Virgin Orbit make a great deal of sense. Rocket Lab was one of these, a rival of Virgin Orbit who has no established interest in seeing to it that horizontal launch becomes successful any time in the near future. They bought Virgin Orbit's headquarters and their manufacturing facilities, and I guarantee you they're not going to use those manufacturing facilities to build any more Launcher One rockets. Instead, they're likely to 
convert the facility to the manufacture of components for either Neutron or Electron, both of which are vertical launch solutions. Now, once again, nothing against Rocket Lab. This was a very good move on their part because they have essentially guaranteed that Virgin Orbit or any version of this company will never emerge again as competition to their solutions. Now, the other buyer is a little less obvious, and this is Stratolaunch, who, frankly, was the company who originally created a lot of the technology that Virgin Orbit and Virgin Galactic currently use. They're also the builders of the largest aircraft in human history, the Rock, which is, by the way, named after an enormous bird out of the Sinbad stories. But regardless of their capabilities, it is interesting to see that they decided decided to purchase Cosmic Girl. Not the rockets that Cosmic Girl launches, but rather just the plane itself for $17 million. Now, if they decide to make use of this plane, it may be to launch some of their own hypersonic rockets. Who knows? Maybe they will offer their services to some of Virgin Orbit's customers who have now lost their launch provider. Although, frankly, I don't see how Cosmic Girl could launch any of Strato Launch's current stable of hypersonic rockets, especially the Talon A. These things are designed to be launched by the gigantic rock, not by a 747. Who knows? Maybe Stratolaunch has another hypersonic rocket waiting in the wings, or maybe they just wanted to buy Cosmic Girl to see to it that it didn't get tossed onto the scrap heap. Maybe to put it in a museum somewhere. Regardless of their plans, it doesn't seem likely that they're going to be making use of Cosmic Girl in any sort of commercial applications anytime soon, which means, once again, horizontal launch in all of these countries that we're looking forward to it is essentially dead. But as I watch this brief interview that I conducted with Dale Alexander, the senior flight crew and launch engineer at Virgin Orbit, it occurs to me that there are those who are going to suffer far more than any of these countries that we're hoping to get horizontal launch delivered to them sometime in the future. People that gave their blood, sweat, and tears for years to this organization and achieved amazing things before they were tragically cut loose. This has been one of the most disappointing weeks that I have ever experienced since I started my channel. Really, one of the most disappointing professional weeks that I have ever experienced, period. In the course of the last four business days, I've had an opportunity to see a very innovative and very promising proposal to get us to the surface of the moon soon and reliably and reusably tossed aside in favor of a more ambitious and frankly a lot more difficult solution that will in the long run I think not put us on the moon for at least another 10 years. A proposal put forward by a company that in spite of its 20-year history, in spite of having one of the richest men on the planet backing them up, has been unable to reach orbit at all. And at the same time, it is so difficult to reach orbit. It is such a difficult thing to accomplish. We've seen one launch provider after another recently try and fail and try and fail, including companies like Astra, including companies like Firefly, Relativity Space, even JAXA has failed to reach orbit recently with new technologies. And yet Virgin Orbit, after one test launch that failed to reach orbit was able to get to orbit with its first set of commercial payloads from NASA. They didn't lose any payloads during the initial development, and then they put dozens of satellites into orbit after that, and then experienced an anomaly on their sixth launch. And nobody should be surprised by that. But here's what's really tragic. There were so many fantastic people at Virgin Orbit. I got to know so many of them. They were working in a wonderful business environment. They were happy. They were an enthusiastic team. They were a unified team. They were a talented team. And all of these people hopefully have found jobs elsewhere. But now they found their previous lives that they had invested so much in literally shattered. I saw so many tears on the night that Virgin Orbit failed to reach orbit at Spaceport Cornwall. 
It was a very sad thing to see, but nowhere near as tragic as what happened to them a couple of months later. This need not have happened. And you know what? Nobody thought that these people were worth investing in. No one. There were still over a hundred staff remaining at Virgin Orbit who, in spite of everything that had happened, were still struggling to reach orbit again to get their next collection of customers into orbit in spite of everything that had transpired, hoping against hope that somebody would buy them out. And there was no one. Instead, somebody bought their plane, somebody bought their manufacturing facility, somebody bought a test facility, and nobody thought that their staff was worth investing in. And that is the biggest tragedy of all. Smash that like, hit that subscribe. Also, please hit those notification bells if you want to continue seeing my content on a regular basis. And finally, if you'd like to see this content continue, please check the description for various ways to support it. And as always, stay angry about space.